Hey, what you doing? Uh, just trying to get motivated to go work. You're trying, um, okay, you, you, you do know that's not how motivation works, right? Come again? I'll take that as a no. Um, you're telling me there's a better way to get motivated? Yeah, actually, um, here, I'll tell you what, I've actually got a video right here. Uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll move. If you're anything like me, you've been approaching motivation completely wrong, maybe even for years. For example, I would wait for motivation to come to me, or I would try to kickstart that process by watching a motivational speech. But this is a bit of a counterfeit to motivation, and it's not very long lasting. And thankfully, there's a much better way to approach this topic. Motivation is not the spark. This quote sums it up quite well. It says, the fire of motivation starts burning after you manually, painfully coax it into existence. And it, motivation, feeds on the satisfaction of seeing yourself make progress. Okay, let's reverse engineer this just a little bit. So, for example, I need to wash these dishes. The way I would have approached this with my old perspective would have been to sit on the couch and wait for motivation to hit, or until I just guilt tripped myself into doing it. Now let's look at this from the way that the quote presents motivation. Through that viewpoint, I would push myself to just start by washing one or two dishes. And that's what the manually, painfully coaxing it motivation into existence is. The next part of the quote explains how we gain the motivation to continue. And it, motivation, feeds on the satisfaction of seeing yourself make progress. Meaning that when you see those nice clean dishes, it gives you a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. And then motivation says, hey, you know, I, I bet if I finish the rest of those dishes, I'll get the same sense of enjoyment, but even more so. And now you've effectively motivated yourself to wash the rest of the dishes. A lot of this comes from the fact that motivation comes after you start, not before. And we tend to get that a little bit mixed up. We tend to think that we get motivation and then we start, but it's not entirely how it works. You'll find this to be true the more and more you put this to practice, where you just begin a process and you'll find that as you go, that motivation follows. Probably about this time you're asking, what if I don't see results? And this really comes back to the mindset that motivation comes after you start, not before. And that it's actually a result of an action, not necessarily something that happens to you. There's a specific angle that I usually approach this question from. So let me try to illustrate it a little bit uh, with a story from my own personal life. So about four years ago, I was like, you know what? It's been long enough. I've had it. I need to get some abs. Now I'm no abologist. So like I had no idea how long this process was supposed to take. So. I just started working out and man, I was like, I was getting after it. I mean, I didn't even look in the mirror for like three days because I was like, this is gonna be so epic. And then on day three, I'm like, okay, today's the day. I'm gonna go look at these abs of steel because these things are burning. So I finished my workout that day, march on into the bathroom and whip up my shirt. I'm expecting the mirror to like shatter instantly. Well, big surprise, no abs. So we know that this is illogical, right? Like it, you can't get a six pack <laughs> in three days, right? But the thing is we approach so many other things that exact same way where we give it, you know, three days, a month, a year, and we're like, I'm not seeing any results. This is dumb. And, uh, you know, a business or, you know, a YouTube channel, you, you can't do that for a month or six months and expect it to instantly be profitable. It takes time. At least the majority, the majority of YouTube channels take a lot of time. I'm running on four years for this one, and I'm still not over a thousand subscribers. Hopefully I am by the time this video posts. And maybe the most surprising thing about this whole story is that I didn't get depressed and like quit working out. I know, shocker. And that doesn't really make any sense, right? Like I, I didn't see results. So where's that, you know, feeding on the satisfaction of seeing yourself make progress? And I didn't realize it, but that satisfaction was still there, just not in the way I was expecting it to be. And I figured this out on day four, where I'm like, huh, huh, this is stupid, I don't know what happens anyway, it's dumb. And I still had that desire to work out. And I was like, why is this so weird? Like, what? <laughs> and so I found myself being like, this is so weird. Like, why do I want to keep doing this? And it turns out that it was because of the, not not the end goal result, you know, the fact that I didn't have abs in, six, in, in three days. It was the satisfaction of completing that workout and finishing and feeling good about myself. That was the satisfaction and that's what was pushing me forward because it felt so good to actually do something hard and push through it. The accomplishment became more about completing the the task versus getting to that end result that I was that I had in my mind. And that's how this is sustainable for you know a lot of people because 
they they enjoy that that satisfaction of you know accomplishing their daily workout or daily run or whatever it is so that satisfaction is often what's causing that underlying motivation you just kind of have to figure out what it is and, and it takes different forms sometimes the last part of this video points to something i like to call habitual motivation this is where we build a habit into a specific routine which allows us to rely on that habit to provide us with motivation. Let me give you an example. So let's say that, you know, you go running each morning. Now built within that activity of running, you have a, a routine that you follow before you actually go for that run. You have kind of the, the get ready phase where you, you know, you get up at a specific time, you, you stretch, you put on your running shoes, uh, maybe you walk down your driveway or, or whatever the case may be, you have that kind of phase of preparation before you actually go do the hard part. And what happens is those little things end up forming into a habit that begin the ball rolling so that you carry through on the rest of the task. And once you build that and those become habits, then let's say you you're, you wake up and you're not motivated at all, you don't wanna go running. What you can do is walk yourself through those habits that are very easy because they're habits. It's like brushing your teeth. It's, it's not hard to do. It doesn't take willpower. You just, you do those habits and the action of doing those will, like I said, it gets that ball rolling so that the next logical thing to do is to go running. And a lot of people, this is how they, they find that motivation or that sustainability in something. They're like, well, I'll just get ready for it or I'll just put my shoes on or I'll just walk out my driveway. And by that point, they're already, they've already started the process. And once that ball starts rolling, it begins to provide its own motivation and it, you carry yourself through the rest of that action. Oh, that's like, um, that's, uh, that's kind of like what you mentioned in your video on um, willpower, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I found that willpower, creativity, and motivation, while they have different mm -hmm. processes, actually have a fair amount in common. That is super interesting. Wow. Well, I think the, the first point you mentioned is probably the one that I need to use for my project. Oh, by the way, what, what project are you working on? You haven't figured it out yet? <laughs> that video.